are. First, what sort of badness did they suffer? Second, how effective were they at ruling despite mental illness? Third, were they insane before or after they started ruling? Fourth, how did their madness affect their citizens? Fifth, and most paradoxical, did these leaders' madness inadvertently make for any sort of greatness for themselves or their nations? The question of insanity's inadvertent usefulness poses a sixth and last question. Against all reasonable expectations, can madness in and of itself be a sort of greatness or even genius? This isn't a new question. German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer asked it in his 1818 work, The World as Will and Representation. He writes, It has often been remarked that there is a side at which genius and madness touch, and even pass over into each other, and indeed, poetical inspiration has been called a kind of madness. Amalus insania, Horace calls it. It might be seen from this that every advance of intellect beyond the ordinary measure, as an abnormal development, disposes to madness. And you can sort of argue this case if you look at great statesmen and military leaders from Napoleon to Abraham Lincoln to John F. Kennedy that struggle with varying degrees of mental illness. Nasir Gaimi, who's director of the Mood Disorders Program at Tufts Medical Center, wrote in A First Rate Madness that the very qualities that mark those with mood disorders make for the best leaders in times of crisis. Lincoln suffered from severe depression, as did Winston Churchill. Both contemplated suicide. Civil War General William Sherman was removed from command over questions of his sanity, and he experienced a manic episode with paranoid delusions and wrestled with bouts of severe depression and suicidal thoughts. Both Martin Luther King and Gandhi attempted suicide while they were adolescents. The argument here is that in psychological studies, depression can be seen as a source of enhanced realism and increased resilience. Well-heeled, quote-unquote, sane men like Neville Chamberlain were lackluster compared to the boldness of Churchill's leadership in World War II. Abraham Lincoln used fortitude developed over a lifetime of discipline and diligence against crippling depression to follow his destiny of abolishing slavery and preserving the Union. During the Civil War, he believed that his melancholia prepared him for the great challenges ahead. The massive death tolls and horrors of the battlefield didn't incapacitate him. Lincoln had spent decades learning to overcome setbacks in his own battered psychology. And one could argue, we'll look at this question more in this series, that rulers who were mad by our definition could actually have been responding in the most reasonable way to their circumstances. They face challenges that don't exist in the 21st century today. Ivan the Terrible killed thousands of his own subjects, but he did so, at least by his own reasoning, to secure the Russian Empire against external threats after the Mongols had slaughtered millions of people across Eurasia only three centuries earlier. Caligula behaved horribly toward the Roman Senate and aristocracy, but it could have been a calculated attempt to demean them and weaken their power, elevating himself to a full monarch and thus best preserve the interests of the masses by crushing corrupt politicians. From their perspectives, at least, being mad was perhaps the most appropriate way to rule in mad times. So with these questions in mind, we're going to look at the most insane rulers in history. Well, that's all I have for today. There's probably a million other things that could be said, but I think this is a good stopping point. First off, I want to give a shout out to the Spy Masters for the Knowlton's Rangers. Vic Austin, Chris, Rob Matlock, Alan Baker, Beverly Ingle, Jake Harrington, Todd Warren, William Ivey, Joyce Norman, Tyler from Colorado, Josh Reddick, Daniel Lawson, Marlene, Michael, Tim Clark, David Powell, Moondoggy from Ohio, Melissa, Chris from Maine, Carl from Norway, Tom from Ohio, Jennifer French Lee, and Baron Fraser. I'll explain what that is in a second. If you like the show and want to help it grow, there are four easy ways for you to do it. One, like and subscribe to the show on the podcast player of your choice. This helps spread the word about the show. Two, join our Facebook group. Here we can keep the discussion going about new episodes and you can talk about what you like and didn't like. And you can find this group if you just search for History Unplugged on Facebook. Three, we have an online store with t-shirts, phone covers, and other accessories featuring awesomely bad history puns that were crowdsourced by you, the audience. And you can find that if you go to tpublic, T-E-E, public.com and look for History Unplugged, or you just go to historyonthenet.com and look for our store there. Four, and this is really the best way to dive deep with History Unplugged, and that's to become one of the Knowlton's Rangers. If you know your American history, you know the Knowlton's Rangers were an elite spy and reconnaissance group in the American Revolutionary War, but it's also the name of the membership program of History Unplugged. You can join at three levels. If you join at the level of Scout, you can hear all the episodes of History Unplugged completely ad-free and get early access to new episodes, at least a week early. 
If you join at the intelligence officer level, you get special bonus episodes, like a 10-part series on the World War II hero Audie Murphy, a multi-part series called Ottoman Lives about different people in the Ottoman Empire, and a series called Rendezvous with Death that looks at biographical profiles of Americans who went to fight in World War I before America entered the war. And the last level is Spy Master, where you get all that stuff, but you also get three hardcover history books, Forging a President, How the Wild West Created Teddy Roosevelt, Race to the Top of the World, Richard Byrd and the First Flight to the North Pole, and The Last Fighter Pilot, the true story of the final combat mission of World War II. Another bonus is you can choose a history topic for me to focus on for an entire episode that can go up to an hour, and I'll answer whatever question you have for me, and you get a shout out at the end of each episode. If you want to learn how to become a member of the Knowlton's Rangers, go to patreon.com slash unplugged. That's patreon.com slash unplugged. All right, well, that is all for my spiel. Thanks for listening to the History Unplugged podcast from ancient Greece to the Cold War and everything else in between. See you next time. Thank you.